Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about circular saw blades. That applies to your table saw, your miter saw, and of course your circular saw and track saws. We're going to go over things like what the different teeth arrangements can do, the angle of the teeth and how that affects your work, and all the different types of saw blades and which ones are best suited for most woodworkers. So if you're curious on whether you're using the most optimal blade for what you're trying to accomplish, stick around and hopefully you guys can learn something. If you're not already, give us a follow, and if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can be alerted when we upload videos like this. To start off, I want to put the blades into three different categories for you. Ripping blades, combination blades, and cross-cutting blades. And these really are the main three parameters you should be looking at when you're specking out a saw blade. Just to cover it for those who are new to woodworking, a ripping cut is a cut that cuts with the grain, and a cross-cut go figure, it cuts across the grain. So use that knowledge to going forward. Most of your table saws and miter saws are gonna come with a middle tooth count blade, something that's in the 40 to 60 tooth range, depending on which table saw or miter saw you buy. This is a great combination blade tooth count because it allows you to do both ripping and cross cutting, hence the name combination blade. So if we look at a combination blade here, it has two things that make it good for both operations. It has what's called an alternating top bevel cut, which means that every other tooth angles in a different direction. This is great for cross cutting, but it also has these big gullies here that allow wood to be pulled in and pushed out of the blade. And those are really great for ripping operations. So it's got a tooth count that's between optimal for cross cutting and optimal for ripping. And it's got a tooth profile that allows it to do both jobs pretty good. Although combination blades will get most entry-level woodworkers by, I strongly recommend taking the money to invest in a good dedicated ripping and cross-cut blade. Combination blades work, but they're not optimal for either operation. And we'll talk about what makes the dedicated blades much better options for the activities that you're using them for. We'll start looking at the dedicated ripping blade. What makes this special is a couple things. One, it has a low tooth count, typically between 24 and 32 teeth. This allows for larger gaps between the teeth and allow more wood fibers to be pulled in and pushed out. Since ripping is an operation where you're kind of splitting the wood fibers versus cross cutting when you're cutting through the wood fibers, you can go much faster with less teeth and still get a really smooth cut. Another feature of ripping blades is the tooth profile. Unlike cross cut blades, most dedicated ripping blades have either a flat top grind where the top of the teeth is perfectly flat or they have some of the newer ones have what's called a triple chip grind, which is a flat top with angled wings on either side. Both of these are designed specifically to leave a very smooth side on your board after you rip, ready for glue up, and if it's on the external of a piece, ready for show. These blades will leave a much smoother cut and cut much faster than a combination and certainly than a cross cut blade. Another benefit of flat top grind and triple chip grind blades is that they leave a smooth bottom in the cut if it's not a through cut. So for example, if you're cutting dados or grooves using your table saw blade, it's gonna leave a nice smooth bottom for your joinery. I highly recommend investing in a nice ripping blade because you will get much better results. Moving over to a dedicated cross cut blade, we see the complete opposite approach. More teeth, means a smoother cut. So essentially on a 10 inch blade, you're looking for anything between 70 and 90 teeth for a very fine finish. This is also gonna help prevent what's called tear out, where on the top and back of your cut, a lot of times the wood fibers will get splintered and leave a rough edge. A higher tooth count blade with an alternating top bevel, again, where the teeth go from one side to the other, really help minimize the amount of tear out. So once you make your cut, there's a lot less cleanup that you have to do. The smaller teeth allow the blade to cut through the fibers as it's crossing the grain and leave a really nice finish. So although it's a little bit slower cutting than a low tooth count blade, it's well worth it. And when you're working with sheet goods like plywood and MDF, you'll get a much better finish quality out of a cross cut blade. So I highly recommend it. I'm gonna give a quick mention to the dado blade. Although I'm not gonna go into detail on the options of dado blades, a dado blade is something that you can put in your table saw or a radial arm saw that allows you to cut a wide kerf all at once. So typically dado stacks come with a three quarter or a 13 16 inch full capacity. And basically it's two saw blades with a bunch of chippers in the middle if you get this style of dado. And it allows you to cut a large dado or groove all in one pass. There's another type of dado called a wobble blade, but I think that's pretty outdated technology and I definitely recommend going with the blade and chipper approach. Much more clean cuts, much easier to tune in with shims. Now that you've decided which saw blade is best suited for your cutting operation, you need to narrow down within that saw blade type which blade you're going to go with. And the first parameter we're going to run into is the kerf. 
Kerf describes how wide of a cut that that saw blade makes, basically how wide the teeth profile is. And this is really important for a couple of reasons because it affects how well the saw is going to cut, but it also affects how much power is required to move that blade. Typically your contractor or your tabletop table saws can't really run well with a full Kerf blade because it's a full eighth of an inch thick. That requires an extra 25% power that most smaller table saws just can't afford. So something like a thin Kerf blade, which is 3 16 of an inch, 25% thinner, is a lot easier for a smaller table saw to push. Now the benefit of a full Kerf blade is that it's got a thicker plate. This is a heavier blade, so it has more momentum, but it's also thicker, and that prevents it from deflecting. There are ways around this, but if you have a larger horsepower table saw, like a three or a five, or even a seven and a half, you're much better off using full curved blades because they're less likely to deflect and they have much more momentum when they're going through the wood. Having said that, if you were running a smaller table saw, thin curve will absolutely get you by. If you're having trouble with deflection, you can buy what are called stabilizer plates from a lot of different manufacturers. And these essentially try to minimize vibration and deflection while letting you still use that thinner curve profile. Another side note about thin kerf is you will be cutting 25% less wood, which means you're using up less waste when you're making those cuts. With regards to kerf and miter saws, I highly recommend sticking with a thin kerf for miter saws. Almost all of them do not have the power to run a full kerf, and they're designed around thin kerf. So using a full kerf blade in a miter saw is going to result in a lot of bogging down in your motor, and you're probably going to put a little too much wear and tear on the machine. One last thing you need to confirm when you're picking out a table saw blade is that the arbor, or the diameter of the hole in the middle, matches up with your saw. This is something that's pretty common and standardized in the United States, but as you start to get things like imported tools, you might have a metric arbor, or if you go really large in diameter, like a 12-inch table saw or a 12-inch miter saw, you might have a 1-inch arbor, and those are things you want to just make sure you double-check before you make your purchase. Although I'm not going to cover in this video which brands I specifically like, I am going to link below to my favorite table saw blades. So if those of you who want to know what we use in our shop, you can go check that out below. I will say though, as a disclaimer, make sure to check with your saw manufacturer which blades they recommend. Certain table saws, like the saw stop table saw, have very specific criteria on which blades will work most effective with their safety mechanisms. So check that out before you buy any blades. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a like and a comment below. We'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have about blades or specifications that we can. Thanks, guys. If you enjoy this video, give us a follow for more content just like this.